My name's Clive Woodnut. I'm a qualified arborist and my job today is to fell the tree behind me. We're in Bulli in New South Wales. Um, we're going to sectionally fell a very large gum. Um, we have to do this using a friction drum and uh, a series of uh, ropes which we're, we'll be using a square rigging technique to lower the branches. Um, fortunately we couldn't get a crane in um, because of the electric cables out the front. We are in close situ to a hospital so we couldn't cut the power off for any length of time. So it has to be dragged from the rear garden up and quite a steep slope. The boys have got to be like mountain goats for the next two days and hump it out all by hand. Um, if you look behind me, you'll see a little yellow line, which is where we're going to cut the tree to. That's roughly seven meters from the ground because it grows through a decking. Uh, just beneath the yellow line, you'll see a cut, which has been made for us to place on a friction drum. The friction drum is a device that the rope is wrapped around and allows the ground workers to lower the branch at a nice steady pace, thus reducing the impact on the crown. Today we'll have a, a toolbox meeting and we'll get together with everyone involved, that's including the chipper guy, even, even the camera guys uh, involved in the toolbox meeting. We have to explain to him exactly how the process works. But a toolbox meeting is where we discuss the method at which we're going to take it down. And then when we've done that, I fill in my safe work method statement and the risk assessment and all the boys sign the paperwork. We have to check that everyone has, say for example, a white card, which is the bare minimum for someone to come on a working site. But uh, we have to fill in all the client's details, the number of days, the description of the job, and things that we may affect. For example, nesting birds, which in this case is a no. We do have permission, we have to get permission from the council. You're not allowed to operate on site without a suitable person that's trained to come and get you out of the tree should there be an accident and you're not allowed to use another set of climbing kit it has to be a set of climbing kits specifically designed for area rescue hi my name's tom fleet and i've uh, i'm working here with with clyde today it's, it's going well we've uh, got a fair bit done uh, I'm over here from the UK. I've worked for the last couple of months with with Clyde, and uh, it's it's been very very good, very informative. He's a very good climber. Um, I'm qualified to do aerial rescue, which is uh, which allows me to to go up and and help him if he gets injured or gets into strife. I can can help him and bring him back down out the tree perform first aid on him and, and that kind of thing. On this particular job here we've had a, a rescue line pre-installed into the tree because it's a very large tree to take, take a long time for us to, to, get, to get up to Clyde if he were to get into trouble. So it makes life a lot easier if, if anything were to go wrong. For me, the second page of our risk assessment is probably the most important one for everyone involved. Um, first aid kits. We've actually got four on site. We have one that goes on my belt, one that goes on Tommy's belt, and we have two personal first aid boxes, and we have one large first aid box that anyone can use. Um, the uh, climbing equipment is probably the most important thing of all and yes it's checked every single day as is the rescue kit which I previously spoke of. All our tools are serviced every day, cleaned and checked. I know for a fact that the wood chipper 
was checked yesterday and everything is up and running. Down here is a list of PPE that each individual has to wear. Um, I personally make sure that all of this is available for my workers. The following list, the helmets, glasses, safety boots, protective pants. My biggest bugbear in this country is that they have laws that state that you must provide this, these things and yet it is extremely rare to see someone wearing protective pants. They're chainsaw resistant pants. Once we've checked all the equipment, it's time to uh, ascend the tree. And uh, we actually cheated. We came in yesterday with a thing called a big shot, which is like a large catapult that you fire a very thin line up into the crowd. And we put some ropes in the trees yesterday so that we can uh, uh, climb it with ease today. Here we've got a, a selection of tree climbing equipment that's used day to day in, well for me anyway, everyone uses their own special bits but I've got a few of my own so it's all inspected before use, after use to make sure there's, there's no, no faults with it, no danger to personal personal life. We've got pulleys and uh, friction friction cord for, for knots and, and uh, ascending. There we've got connectors, that's, that's used for uh, aerial rescue, for connecting two climbers together. We've got um, ascenders and descenders, we've got friction reduction devices and another ascender with a little, little pulley on there. We've got all sorts of equipment. To use day to day. Um, on my harness I've got a personal first aid kit and a rescue knife for, for self rescue or for aerial rescue or for just use on, on the work site. Again harness is inspected every day to make sure there's no, no damage to it to uh, keep everything in good order, make sure everyone's as safe as possible. <laughs>
Hi, my name's Aaron Watson. I'm here with Clyde today, helping in removing this large gum tree. Part of my job is to use this friction device. This here is a friction drum, and we're able to take down really large pieces of the tree without getting pulled up the tree, for say for instance. It's pretty much impossible to take down a tree this size without one of these tools here. And the training that's involved in this is through the TAFE course and training provided on the job. So I'm going to send the rope up to the climber. If we do it or not, this, this is called a marlin spike. She can touch the rope and the climber that can then pull it up to himself in the tree. So once that's in the tree, he's got a branch tied off. We're going to lower it out by, firstly we go through the eye here, around the drum, half a turn, one turn, one and a half turns, two turns. And there we have it. So to bring down a piece this size, you're looking at two turns. Right, well just to keep you up to speed, what happens now is I position my rope so that I can put directional cutting as I go up. <laughs> Ideally you need to pull this from next door, so if you launch that bag from the balcony into the next door, you can go around and pull it from there. Beautiful.
Beautiful. So we're back, back again. It's uh, Saturday the 22nd. If you pan up the tree, you will see that the crown has now been removed and all we have is the large stem left. Um, you'll see by the footage exactly how this was done um, with the use of the friction drum and uh, all up we had uh, all up we had uh, 11 people here today including chippers and uh, cameraman and uh, my wife played a big part she brought down loads of refreshments for the boys because believe it or not up until now it was absolutely roasting hot um, so we've been looking after the boys, making sure that their fatigue levels are kept to a bare minimum. Uh, having said that, they're still walking up this mountain goat track of a driveway. If you look behind and upwards, we've probably got about four hours to remove the stem. Four hours work left, we'll be able to uh, chop those down in say two or three metre pieces until we reach the point where the friction drum becomes useless and uh, we've put in uh, four sheets of plywood on a kind of floating floor and we've got the scaffold guy coming in to build a framework around the remainder of the tree so that we can bring it down in small pieces and uh, we're cutting it down to that uh, yellow line that's painted on the trunk and we're turning it into a beer table for the lady. That way she can incorporate it in her entertainment area. Um, the actual costing for her to remove this decking and replace it was over 20,000 so and a new decking is 25,000 so it makes sense just to incorporate it and she's still got a bit of a memory it's, it's useful you can't see downstairs now because it's too dark but believe me there's seven, seven at least seven meters of trunk left it'd be virtually impossible to remove the tree without removing the decking because the decking is actually attached to the tree. I should get a massage from the wife later. Very nice.